I love fantasy characters and I love dwarves most of all. So today we're going to do a little dwarven priest, right? And we're going to carve one and then I'm going to do another video for painting and I'll show you how to either stain them or paint them. But uh, today, just carving, we're going to do a dwarven piece with a big fat nose and a beard that takes up maybe 80% of his body. It's going to be fantastic. So let's go ahead and do this thing. Now this is a four inch piece of block basswood and it's two by two. So four inch, two by two on a piece of American basswood and we're just going to get started. Now I'm going to draw a line here straight through the top because that helps me keep track of where my center is and then a circle here in the middle for around about where my hood is going to be at the center of that carving. And while I'm doing all this, you'll be able to look at the overlay right here and see what all is going on. But uh, I'm going to be using the carving I already did as kind of a reference for myself while I do this. And <clears throat> the lines you draw in the beginning aren't necessary, necessarily the, uh, the, the absolute have to go this direction. You don't have to do anything. They are a guide, a general guide. That's like the bottom of the elbows, kind of right there, you know, right here. And uh, that beard is going to come down like this massive beard. And the arms are going to go right here underneath that beard. We'll bring that beard all the way down to the hood top. It's going to be like so. Not about like that. Just a general rough kind of a drawing <clears throat> just to give me an idea. So... And there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna start on the left and right side of the hood here and just knock some wood out. Just going in, slicing up and out of the top here. So we're kind of curving it in a little bit. Not the easiest cut to do sometimes with a, uh, a flat blade, but on a longer slope do it pretty well. Like so. I like that general shape right there. We want the shoulders not to be squared off like we would in a dwarven warrior. We don't want to be rounded up because that hood, one piece of cloth between the shoulders and the, and the hood itself. That knife is kind of dull. Let's see here. This one better. That's better. And I'm only swapping knives because I can tell that the uh, the other one here needs to be stropped, and I don't really want to stop now that I've started just to strop the knife. So I swapped to one that uh, is stropped. That's why I like having multiple knives. And uh, if you can tell, I'm not recording the audio after the fact on this video. I'm recording it during the video, so I hope it works out and I don't have to redo anything. But uh, normally I don't do things this way because I have kids and they are consistently in the house making noise, being loud as kids are wont to do. And I don't want to stop that. I like the kids are loud. I like they're having fun, that they're boisterous and uh, just enjoying their home. I don't want to dampen that, dampen their childhood like that, you know. So, all right, so I've got both sides of that pretty well blocked in. Now I'm going to work on taking a little of these hard edges off here in the front, just a little bit, not too much. Just where it's easier to grip. This side here. And this side over here, just getting a hard edge off there. And then we'll flatten this back section here off some. So let's take a good bit off the back here that we don't necessarily need right now. Ooh, uh, yeah. This is different doing the recording the audio at the same time that I'm carving. So bear with me while I learn this process better. 
about that much. It was about a quarter of an inch, maybe. That's about 25% of the way through, I should say, at least. So I'm starting in the middle and then carving up because it's a lot easier than starting at the end. If you start at the end, you're going to wind up splitting. So starting in the middle and then working your way up, starting in the middle and working your way down. It's a little bit easier for me. And you can see as I'm doing this, right, it's starting to split a little bit, going this direction. So keep that in mind, right, because as I do this, it's starting to bite down deeper. So you can wind up taking off more than you want to if you do it this way wrong. Now you can correct it and smooth it out. You can see how it's tearing there in the wood, right? You can correct it by taking thinner slices. But when I'm taking a lot of wood off, I don't mind this tearing. I'm trying to take a lot of wood off. But if I misjudge it, I can wind up taking too much. So keep that in mind. And if you can't do it this way, like that right there, we started biting too deep, too quick. So I'm going to change directions on myself. And then just take that off this direction. And I probably should just stay this direction because it's the direction the wood grain wants me to go. Then I can slice through the wood and not into that grain, thus biting down and going deeper as I progress, which will wind up just messing up your carving if you take off too much wood. So yeah, now I'm just getting some saw marks off the back here. The saw marks, as I've mentioned before in other videos, take stain and paint differently than a spot on the wood carving that has touched a blade. So you don't want to leave those in place. And usually the sooner you get those off, the better. You don't have to worry too much about getting them off in spots where like you're going to be taking it all down. So like in the front, this all, this, all this beard is going to be taken all down. So I'm not too worried about cleaning saw marks off of there, but the shoulders maybe. Hey, if you want to help the channel out and get something in return, you can head over to Etsy and get one of these carving stickers of different varieties. You can put one on your water bottle, your tool tote, your carving space, wherever you want to put a sticker at. If you want to help out, you can. If you don't want to help out, don't even worry about it. <laughs> my carving sticker that one's funny to me at any rate thanks so much maybe okay so we got that done here the back is mostly fixed up let's go ahead and round off the back of this head now and start bringing that in and you can take a look at the overlay which i can't see right now but you're gonna see an overlay of the carving that we're actually doing that's a neat thing about fancy post-processing and modern technology is I can put up the carving that we're doing and you'll be able to see the finished product and what we're going for. So if you're wondering, I wonder if that cut translates exactly to the, the, the depiction here on the screen. It does. That's exactly the carving that I've got in my hand right now. There we go. Something else I want to mention too, uh, if these videos give you any kind of value if you enjoy the video don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel all of that really helps me it uh, encourages me to make more videos when i see more likes and uh, more subscribers so please don't just pop into the channel and watch videos put a subscription on there that way you get notified too whenever a new video pops up and i get to see that number go up which Makes me happy. Makes me feel like I'm doing something and contributing some way to the wood carving community that has contributed so much to me. Okay, so we got that back rounded off a good bit. I like that. Now I'm going to do a little pairing cut here to work on the top and round that into. I like this pairing cut because when you're cutting wood grain, it allows you to get a lot more out a little bit easier, you know? And the thing here is I'm using that thumb, that left thumb, or the right, the, the right thumb here is down underneath the knife. So I'm pushing, I'm pushing the wood back this way and pulling the knife with my fingers and I'm keeping that from getting to the thumb. Do you follow? So I'm not bringing the thumb to it. I'm keeping the thumb down all the way. And this is the action, right? So I'm not in danger of getting that thumb on there. I might bring it up closer while I'm doing this, but I'm not putting that thumb up here behind it. So that's why I'm not too worried about it. You see a lot of old men say that, uh, when I say old men, I mean like people who whittling in old TV shows. You never whittle towards yourself, right? That's uh, not the case necessarily. If you look at a lot of wood carvers who are good at what they do, they're doing cuts like this too. <laughs> you just need to be controlled with your cut. You need to 
know where the blade's going to go, what it's going to do, and really, I don't think any way of cutting is necessarily off the table if you're practiced at it, if you know what you're doing. So, something to keep in mind. But cutting this way here on this end grain allows me to get a little bit more leverage. And that leverage makes it easier to get that end grain cut. And the end grain here, this is where it's going to show, this is going to show you how sharp your knife is, right? How easy this is to cut. It's going to let you know whether or not your knife is doing well. Or if you need to sit down and just drop some. And you can look at this, right? This knife could be strapped more. I can focus on that a bit better. You see, it could be strapped more, but it's doing pretty well. Okay. So, we have got that part done. We've rounded that off. And uh, we're going to be rounding it down to the front more as we get closer to the face. But for right now, that's fine. So, let's work on putting in uh, the elbows here for our little guy here. Put those elbows in. That's about the right height. So, our elbows marked right there. And we're just going to stop cut into the wood here. And I'm not doing it too deep, just uh, right about so. And then I'm going to carve up to it. Stop cut there. And then carve down as well. Back up to it. And down as well. And then back up to it. We'll take a look at that. That's a good start. That was a, we went a little bit deeper there. Let's just go a little bit deeper here. Now when you're doing this too, you know that's what I just did here, right? I'm carving a little bit to the corner of one side. So I'm only getting about half of that off. And then I snap it out. That's a lot easier than doing it all at once. If you're trying to like get one big chip here all the way through, that's going to be harder on you. Instead, do it just at a slight angle and get half of it. Then do the other half. And that's significantly easier to carve. So if you're having a problem getting the same kind of stuff that I'm doing done for yourself, and you're like, man, the, you know, my hands are hurting, or just do it a little bit easier on yourself. Don't take out as much wood as I'm doing. Step back. And that might take you a little bit longer to carve. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no time limit on this. You can pause this video anytime you want to and come back to it. There's no reason that you need to rush. So don't rush. Don't rush yourself. And up to that cut again. Then we're just working on the elbows. Just setting them in. We got a good idea of where they're at. And I've got that one in a bit farther than this one. And that one's a little bit lower than this one. So we need to adjust that. So let's go a little bit deeper on this guy. That's pretty good. And then we'll raise this one here up. And that's pretty close. I like that. Okay, so let's do this hood now. We want the hood to come up and hide the eyes a little bit, right? And then we're going to put a big old nose right here. And it's a dwarven guy, right? Dwarven priest. So the bigger the nose, the more he's going to look like a dwarf. If you do a thin nose, he's not going to look like a dwarf. He might look like an elf or just some guy of the hood, right? But look at the overlay. And you can see like that big nose here, that big thicker nose that comes out. Like thinner at the top and thicker as it comes out. That really, is, that's a dwarven flair, you know? And you can obviously add braids and, and, and beads and, and bars and stuff like that to the beard. You add decoration that helps give that dwarven vibe. That big nose, that's a big part of this as well. Okay. So this guy's the same height, like I said, four inches. Um, for the elbows here, we're going to put a line here to, to mark the arm, and then we're going to have that come in. Well, about, about the same height on the other side, a line there, and then come in as well. And maybe that goes a little bit higher. Let's erase that. And while you're doing this, you're going to be adjusting things as you go. There's nothing wrong with that at all. 
be free to adjust your carving as you as you do it and uh you'll be better off if you don't confine yourself to the the lines you did those lines aren't meant to to hold us back and to, and to lock us into something they're meant to to give us a guide that we can use to do more all right so i'm going to do a cut here for this elbow i'm going to just go straight in like so right pretty deep cut because i can do that so the deepest part of that cut is right there at the top of the line and i'm just getting it down to the top edge of that line that i drew right and i'm going to pull it right back out i'm going to do the same thing over here and the deepest point is going to be the inside of that elbow so i'm going to push that in right same kind of thing get it in like that right now that deepest point like i said is right there and it's shallower here and shallower there so we're going to start with a tip of our knife at the top of this elbow here angle it kind of up like this and then we're going to carve right down to that to take out that chip and we're going to do the same thing now but now we're going to do it at a wider plane so i'm going to come back out a little bit out to the edge like so and curve down to it snap that out and again Okay, let's do the same thing over here. And you can see like we had two lines drawn there because I didn't, I wasn't beholden to that one. I went to this one here. And we should make sure this slot, this side here matches generally the other side. Alrighty. Nice and deep in. Nice and deep in on this one as well. Like so. And then same thing. We're going to come in, starting here at the top, and then coming in at that angle. It's different when you're doing it at different angles, right? We're going to be rotating these carvings to get ourselves in better positions for making our cuts. There's nothing wrong with that. You should be rotating your carving all the time to find the right spot to come in at to attack any angle that you have to carve or... Okay, that's a little bit deeper than I wanted to, but we can fix that just by making it match the other side a little bit more. Okay, so we got some good elbow edge in. Now, let's go ahead and work on this hood a little bit more, huh? I bounce around on carvings all the time, trying to figure out where I want to work next. But, if you're wondering, like, how is this going to look? I said take a look at the overlay on the left there you'll see exactly what we got going on right now I'm just rounding off the front of this hood a bit right like the overlay does and then we're gonna be setting up where the top of this hood is gonna be and the top of the nose and that will probably adjust our hood a great deal we will be absolutely adjusting this hood as we set this in here so i'm gonna get a detail line so it might be a little bit easier let's see here redraw this line through there i think that'll be good now this is going to be going straight into the wood so with this flat surface here i'm going to be going straight in and i'm going to be drawing this line here right and I'm going to be pulling the carving with my left hand. The knife isn't moving here. My left thumb is pushing the knife. And my left hand is pulling the carving. I'm going to do a push cut right there. And now I'm going to do the same thing that I pulled on here. Now it's hard to tell that right hand isn't moving. The left hand is the one that's doing the work on this. I'm moving the carving using my left thumb to push down on the knife blade right there. That's why I've had a wrap on there. That wrap on there is not to protect the thumb from the, from the, from the sharp edge of the blade. It's to protect it from the back, and I'm always putting so much pressure on the knife blade when I'm carving. But, uh, yeah. so when I do tracing lines like that, this hand is mostly just holding the knife, and then the carving is rotating around it. And I'm never pushing with so much force that I risk losing control. That's what people get themselves cut. I'm avoiding that because I don't want to get cut, right? 
keep the knife in the wood, not in people. Now, put a little bit of an incline on that. And that nose, we're gonna give a big nose. What do you think about there? That's a good size schnoz, right? So let's do a stop cut right there. And you can do this all with one knife. I just like to swap knives out sometimes because I've got so many knives, as you can see in the background here. And I love switching between them. I love playing around with different knives or different things. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a video here relatively soon on the benefits of different types of knives, different styles of knives. But I realized that not everybody, a lot of people say they don't like an upsweep blade, right? I don't understand how you can be so against an upsweep blade. They cut better than a straight blade. They do, there's no denying that. They cut easier. So if your hands get tired too much, an upsweep blade is probably gonna be a better bet for you. But they also allow you to get into more places easier because like, look at the blade profile on this blade here, right? If I wanna get the uh, the wood grain here, with a rough out knife, it's hard to get to that right all the time without cutting into something else because the blade is so long. But this, because that profile, it's curved, I can make only a certain edge of it touch and get to just that spot, you see? Which gives me more options. So if I wanna get right there in the middle, I'm, I'm cleaning up that section of the wood, but not this section, right? It gives me options for detail work or for carving that I wouldn't normally have without having an upsweep blade. So, all right, where was I? <clears throat> Doing the nose here, sorry, got distracted. So, big wide nose. That like so, that'll be a big wide nose. And then we'll sink in on either side here. Now I'm gonna try to come straight into the carving, right? This carving's on a corner, so we're coming straight in like this, and I'm gonna come in straight, but at an angle over here, like so. And then do the same thing on the other side. Coming in straight at the carving, but at the angle of that right there, which is the difficult part to get. Coming straight in, but at that angle of the nose. So you're coming like you're just rotating it out and then coming down in, right? And then uh, coming up to the other hood there. And flipping it around, a little pairing action. Get the other side here. This guy will have a big schnoz. Put that nose up underneath. Underneath the hood, like so. And right about here, we're 23 minutes in. Let's take a moment from our sponsors. Our sponsor is me. Watch this video real quick. Welcome back. Thank you for checking that out. Like I said, the little advertisement, don't worry about it if you don't want to. It's just if you want to get a chance to, or an opportunity to help out. If you don't like the audio of this video that we're doing right now, that's what I'm trying to fix. I don't like the way the audio is and I want a better option. I don't know all the better options, but uh, I've done some research. And I think uh, the lavalier microphone I can get, that I think would be absolutely fantastic for this. Because a regular desk mic, every time I bump the desk or hit the desk, it makes noise. I don't like it after I try to fix it after the fact. All right, so all I'm doing right now is just chipping away at this nose here, putting a little more depth around it, right? Like if you look at the overlay here, we don't really do much for the eyes, right? It's just the hood itself, right? And this is a much bigger nose than this guy has, but there's nothing wrong with that. We can make it smaller if we need to. I'm gonna take that, uh, saw marks off the nose. Like so. Like that. Just round in and off a little bit too. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Just shaping that nose a bit. I like all those hard edges on it, you know. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Looking a little bit better. Just a bit of time. Okay. Now, that hood is out a little bit too far. Let's bring that in. Just barely under that hood. Right over the top of his eyes. Now, we, that, that head there, right? It can be smaller. So let's bring in the side of this hood here. Same thing on the other side. Bring that in because his head looks too fat right now. We don't want it to be too fat. I said we're going to be adjusting the head as we go. Once we get the nose in, that kind of helps you figure out where the head is versus where you want it to be. So we're going to keep adjusting our hood now to put it in line with where this head actually is. I'm going to start figuring that out. Oh my gosh, these woods just bought me. All right. <clears throat> so the back of the head here, that's way too far back, right? And you can see this guy here, we bring it in a good bit. Let's do that right now. Bring all this in. And see, on the back of a head, you don't have it coming straight down to the body. The head sits in a little bit, and there's a little shelf behind the, the nape of the neck there on the shoulders. So we need to kind of show that a little bit, right? That's what we're going to try to do here. More like that right there, right? You see on this guy here, that's that, that's that shelf there, the nape of the neck, right? That we're going for. Something else that happens, too, is that the back of the head comes out a little bit more than the base of the nape of the neck. So you want to show that a little bit, like this right here. Just put a little sweeping cut in here to set that in for us, like so. <laughs> well, that's doing pretty good. The more we set that in, like this, the sweeping cuts right here, the more we define that head as well. And this side here is just a little bit too much. So we're bringing this in as we learn the shape of his head. And we're learning the shape of his head with him, you know? So we look at the front and we think, where can I fix this? Where do I need to fix this? Or does it not look right, right? A little more off of here. More off of here. Round off the front of this a bit more. That's starting to look pretty good. Back of this head needs to be rounded off some too. A bit more than it is. All right, that is looking significantly better, right? He is not gonna match this other guy. We're not going to match. We're making, we're making him a different person. Like this guy's gonna have a bigger nose. All right, so. We're going to bring that beard down. Give it a, a longer beard, but we're going to come down like thinner. This one comes out a little bit wider. Now this one comes out a little bit thinner. Okay, we got those arms coming in a little bit farther on this guy. Alrighty, so let's continue that line from the hood. That's what the beard's coming out of. 
upside down like so. And like so. And this time I moved the knife because I'm going down into this carving mat, right? My hand's out of the way and I can do that and go right down to the carving mat without hitting the camera. <laughs> right down to the carving mat, not, not in danger of hitting my hand. So you're wondering like, well, hold on, he just, he just ignored his own uh, thing there. Indeed, but that's okay. All right, now let's carve out underneath the edge of this hood right here at the top. Help to find that area a little bit more. Separate it out from the hood. We don't need to separate a lot out here because this hood is very close to the face here, right? It's coming right down over the eyes, barely over the nose. So you don't need to find too much here. Just a bit. Just a bit. There we go. All right, now we need to define some cheeks. Come down from that corner of the nose here and then bring it around like so. Same thing on this side, corner of the nose. Let's really start to realize like we've got more cheek on this side than this side. But does that bother me? I don't know, I don't think hoods ever sit straight on a head, right? That nose, we know that's centered up. It's right here in line with so our hood goes back further on the left side than it does on the right side. But I kind of like the look. I don't think it bothers me. So we're gonna do a straight cut, straight in, and we're just gonna curve around that cheek. Like so, same thing on the other side. Straight in. Curve around, okay? And we're gonna come here at an angle, up to the cut, like so. And I do the same thing from the, the top, at an angle, and curve around to the nose, which will define that big, thick cheek on our guy. Same thing here. Mm -hmm. And from the other direction as well. There we go. That's looking pretty good. He's got a thick face. I kind of like this guy a bit better, I think, right now. Because I like how much thicker the nose is. I think it's really going to put some personality into him. We're going to round off the inside of this hood here a little bit. We'll do this side first. Because if we do this side here, see the grain's going down right here. We're going to catch the grain and tear it. So we're going to do this side first. And that hood on the other side needs to be done in a different direction. To avoid that issue there I noticed with the grain. So for this side here, we're going to go with a pairing cut. Because like I said, that wood grain, you can see it down right here. If I go this direction, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to catch it, I should say, and tear it. So that's why we changed direction there. And as you carve, it's one of the things you're learning, learning to look, to learn, to realize, to see, to know, is where that wood grain is, and then knowing before you make a mistake, what you need to do to fix it. All right, so right now I'm just, uh, I'm putting a little curvature on this hood here. Just coming in, a little sweeping cut, putting a little curve to the top of this hood. Give it a little, a little life, right? You can see that right there. That just comes alive a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Doing, like I said, rotating the carving because from where I was, I couldn't get this angle to do this right. So we move, right? That's really going to pop. That's really going to help us out. That looks great. Just adding to that dimension of our warrior, our, our dwarven priest here, you know? Okay. So now the beard here is sitting out further than the robe behind him. So we need to cut this section here out, not this section. So 
So we're going to come right down to the bottom and just start taking out some small chips just to find that beard against the rest of them. I can feel that starting to tear there. So I'm going to go right here to the edge of the hood and we're just going to carp down to it. Right. Now, right here, we're going to continue the arm sweep in there. So I stop cut right there. You see that right here where the where the elbow goes in underneath the arm, or the arm goes in underneath the uh, beard, I should say. I stop cut there, and I'm just going to carve right down to it to help define that arm as being underneath that beard, right? So we're doing the same thing on this side that we just did on this side here. Work out this direction. I think it is. A little bit higher, a little bit more. I'm being a little more gentle here than I necessarily need to be. Nothing wrong with that. Take your time. There's no rush, right? I'm not in a rush. You're not in a rush. If this video takes an hour and 20 minutes versus an hour, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's the same thing for you. If this carving takes you a little bit longer than you want, you know what? That's okay. This is relaxing time. Learning a skill is not, not something you need to rush, you know? All right, so I'm rounding out this corner here, the arm, and the top of the arm here, right? a 45 degree angle on that then right here in the corner of the elbow we're going to do a v cut that's going to provide a little bit of a look of folded cloth like that so two v cuts like so right now we also have like i said some uh saw marks still here so let's see if we can move those real quick and then fix those v cuts if we need to if we need to. Again, that pairing cut coming in the clench. We'll round off that hard corner. And take off saw marks here. There we are. That throws a lot of chips my way too. Okay. So for the inside edge, oh no wait, let's just do this other elbow here real quick. Okay. Like so. Like so. And then two little V cuts that and then one like that and then let's start curving this beard here mm -hmm. just put a little life to the beard the beard shouldn't be squared too much Unless that's the look you're going for. I mean, I guess sometimes they can be squared. Sometimes you'll, you'll cut a beard nice and square on the end. Like, and maybe a dwarven guy would have a square ended beard. But I want to have this be not like a, a real manicured beard. I want to have it be more natural, more free flowing, more dwarven like. just carving that edge down and then we can try to take off some of this saw marks on the surface of the beard as well we don't need those carving this direction I'm carving right now you see it's catching it's digging into the wood 
but it's better to switch in some spots if you see that. I didn't switch as quickly as I would have, but I wanted to point it out. Make sure you see it, right? That's the goal of these videos. It's not just learning how to carve this guy here. You should be learning how to carve better at a, on a hole so you can move past me and go do something else, right? Go do another type of carving that you want to do. All right, so <clears throat> we got that beard a little bit more defined. Um, round off this edge a bit more before we move on to another section that we jump around. I jump around a lot. I'm doing here is I'm just gonna bring in this corner here a little bit to the base of the beard like so come in just round that corner off a little bit which gives that beard a little bit more depth you know, makes it look deeper and bigger. I like that. Deeper and bigger. Okay. So, we got this big flowing beard here. We don't have these arms all the way to find. We still need to finish the rest of that. So, let's go ahead and mark that in right there. And then we'll carve up to it. Round it out a little bit as well as we go. That defines that arm a bit better, right? And we'll do the same thing here on the other side. Carving up to it. Ship it out. Up to that and then ship it out. Then we're covered down here from the elbow because we don't have that depth just being gone in the middle. Like see, you know, it comes out there, but doesn't over here. Do the same thing over here. And bring that depth that it is here down to there as well. Make it translate. Looking much, much better now. A little progress so far. We've got a lot of good progress in here. Now, let's worry about the back of the arms here. You can see for one, like this elbow here is a little bit lower than the elbow on this side. So real fast, we're gonna come in here and fix that by taking out that corner. Well, that's, that, just, that just took care of it right there. That just took care of it. That was barely a little bit of a chunk. All right, now see how high up the arm goes on the front there? Do the same thing in the back here, right like so. Same thing in the back, same depth as the front. Right, like so. And then we're gonna put a belt around the back, right? And you see the other guy we did, you can see in the overlay. The belt comes right out of the back of the underside of the arms here. And we'll just come around like so. Nice thick belt for the back. That'd be a good, good little thing to do. Alrighty, so those arms <coughs> carving centered up here on that 90 right so they can see right here that's the center of it where it comes straight in right here set them down on the thing I just got to pull straight down same thing on this side straight in and pull straight down okay now I am going to slice up into that armpit and come down and you can see I'm coming down a bit deeper over here than I am and just come up to it and then stop cut sweep down again and we're going to wind up taking out more of this bottom corner here because of this because we're learning to define where the bottom of the rope is going to be based off of the rest of our carving right so where this arm is going to be to put more depth to it we've got to take this wood out to make it look right which just means that we didn't have this set properly in the first place and we didn't know that until we got to this point to be able to see it and find out a lot of this stuff 
<clears throat> your carving is speaking to you and you gotta pay attention to it, you know? You gotta see what it needs. That way you know where to carve next. Right now, I'm realizing <clears throat> I need to find underneath that arm more, which is why I just switched over to it before I even started talking about it. I saw it and I started fixing it. That's gonna be the kind of problem you run into with uh, me re recording audio at the same time is I might just be like, squirrel, and run over there and take care of something. But uh, I think that's going to be beneficial in the long run because I think seeing the way that someone's mind works on a carving while they're doing it and how they're correcting things as they see it is going to be really beneficial, I think. I think that's also a very important skill everyone needs to learn when you're carving is what do I need to do to correct? What am I looking for, right? And I can tell you all day long what I think you should be looking for. But when you see it, in what I'm doing versus what I'm saying, seeing it yourself really teaches us so much more than hearing something. Because not all of us can learn just by hearing something told to them, right? If it worked that way, people wouldn't be making mistakes anymore, especially not mistakes that have been made in the past because we'd all be able to learn from them just by seeing the example of somebody else. But we don't, <laughs> and we can't learn that way. Sometimes we have to learn other ways and learning by observation, seeing that aha moment that someone else has when they notice something and then it clicks and then you understand when they couldn't have explained it well enough for you to understand some other way. Okay. So, back this arm. Arm that off a little bit. And you don't have to just use this. You can use a V tool for this, right? It gets a little depth in there a little bit easier for you if you like to. Just go ahead and do that right there and get in there. Or don't do that and just use the knife and just keep swooping cuts down in there and then taking it out out of the bottom either way you get a little depth in there behind the arm and that works pretty good round out that a little bit his elbows aren't perfectly square you know you're gonna have a little roundness to them especially when it's covered in cloth all right other side See how I'm doing this? I'm making that swooping cut and using it in a pairing action because I'm just, I'm exercising those fingers here like that, right? Now, I, now the blade, I've got my fingers wrapped around it. So I'm using a rough out blade to do detail work right now. That's the thing about a rough out blade is the tip of it right here, that's a detail knife. A rough out blade and a detail knife are very similar. It's just that the, the blade handle goes up higher, right? So that detail blade, there's a detail blade right there end of that rough out knife so if you only have one knife a good rough out knife is absolutely going to be beneficial to you but you can just uh do what i call choking up on it right where i grip the knife like this right this finger's coming down here to the side of the blade and i'm using the knife like that as a detail blade now and you can do the same thing get up higher on it up here but when you're pairing cut when you're doing a pairing cut you might need to choke up on it like this to do that there's nothing wrong with that i can do this just fine here and use a bigger knife to do something a smaller knife would be useful for. So if you can only afford one knife, rough out knife is a good knife to get. And uh, the blade I'm using here, this one in my hand, this is from Beckwith Forge over on Instagram. Any rough out knife will do. If you get an, a rough out knife from Deepwood Ventures or Drake or Helvey Flex Cut, Whatever one suits you, whichever one you prefer, it is very much a preference thing. Don't let anyone tell you different. I like these knives made by Beckwith because, for one, they're solid wood carving knives, and two, the handles are beautiful, blades are beautiful, and uh, they're, they're priced well, and I like the way that they're attached. I like just like all of it. I got some finger wrap on this just to make it you know, easier to grip sometimes. Alrighty, working on this elbow still here. Turn that around. There we go. That's looking pretty darn well, I think. Now let's go ahead and start defining that belt.
all the way around, just stop, cut along the top where we want the belt, carve down to it. Rotate your carving as needed. Okay, there's the top of the belt. Bottom of the belt's gonna go a little bit further up underneath that arm. Get right under the elbow. Get a good grip on this. As you see me stop before I cut, because my grip isn't great, and I'm like, okay. If I cut it like that, I might want to cut it myself because I'll lose grip on the carving. So let's change where the hands are. Don't get in too much of a hurry when you're doing this. Think, where are my hands? Do I have a good grip on the carving? Am I going to lose my grip? Do I need to change my grip? Consider that before every cut. Get in the habit of that. It's a good habit to be in. And that habit will keep you from cutting yourself. Okay, we got a good belt to find there, I think. That was looking fantastic. Now for the bottom of the carving here, we're going to smooth out this section here because it goes in too sharp up to the belt. We're going to come down a little bit farther and just smooth that edge out. Because having it come out towards the bottom is fine, just not at this sheer angle that it is right now. So we're just going to adjust that a little bit. That's, but that's a good bit better, right? Now on the back of him here, we're gonna adjust that angle as well. Same thing. Right down to the belt. Now on a, on a dwarven warrior, right? Or a dwarven priest even. All these dwarves, these guys are built. I mean, they are strong. Well, to, to, to show a little bit of that, so you can do is like on the back here, have the back come out a little bit farther and then come down to the belt. Like his back is muscular and big, right? That's something you can do to help define that. Another thing you can do is kind of curve the arm here in. So if we sunk this section here, the arm, in a little bit further, and then the top as well, we can give an illusion. The illusion. There's a bit of a bicep there, see? We can do that real quick. Give a little hint of a bigger arm hidden underneath that robe, you know? And that right there, the hint of that large lumbering back, right? He's a, he a stout fella. Even as a priest, he's swinging a hammer to smite the enemies of the Dwarven kingdoms, right? So, now that belt, that's pretty hard and rough looking. We're going to round this out. Just got a 45 degree angle that belt all the way around. On each side, top and bottom. Just working the top right now. Now let's do the bottom. Belt's coming out a little bit too far. We just take a little off the top. Okay. That belt is looking very belt like. I like it. And now let's look at the beard here. We're about to be done here in a minute. Alright, so we got the belt. You know, let's just a little detail of the beard. So. We're gonna bring the top mustache down. And how you define this mustache is completely up to you. But we go to the left corner here, the nose. 
and we just bring a line down how we want to. You know, same thing on this side, right corner of the nose, bring that line down. And then in the middle here, where we put our next mark is going to determine how large that upper lip is, right? If we're, if we're stylizing this guy, we can exaggerate him and put it down here, right? That gives him a much bigger mouth. I kind of like that wide upper lip. That's kind of neat. I like the effect. So let's do that. Let's do that wide upper lip by bringing this down here. But if we did this same mark, just a little bit higher, it'd be a thinner upper lip, you know? We could even put it down here and have a huge upper lip if we wanted to, but we don't have to do that. Just like this, I think is gonna be just fine. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's carve that in. So again, with the detail knife coming straight in, actually I'm coming in a little, little bit of an angle, okay? I'm like 10 degrees off the side. And coming right down there. Same thing on this side here. Bringing it down. The bottom is open because that blend down to the rest of the carving here. Same thing over here. Like so. And then we're going to carve the inside of this up to that area. Same thing over here. We're going to turn around, pairing cut up to that. and this other side here. Same thing on this side here, just carving that out and that will define this beard here. And you can define this mustache as much as you want to. You can sink it down in there lower by going a little bit deeper on the beard over here, right? And if we do that, mustache pops out and is more defined. And then we can just decide how we want to do that. Do we want to have it more defined? Do we want to have it less defined? See, I did that right there. That cheek needs to be rounded off a bit more now. Fixing things as you go is usually a good idea. Thinking out, okay, I can round this off to correct that, you know. Don't leave problems that you have now till later. Go ahead and fix them now as you're doing this. Okay, let's do the inside of this lip a bit more under the mustache. This side's better than the other one was. There we go. I like that a lot. Let's curve out inside of that mustache on this side and on this side, right? So big old beard, right? And you can add some flair to the bottom of this mustache if you want to. You can just, uh, Put little bars like so on it if you want to. Let's adjust that one. Like that. And like that. And we're just going to do a nice little stop cut to it. Right down to it. Right there and then right up to it. And the other side, stop cut action, and then down to it. And then right there, stop cut, and then up to it. All right? And then we're going to take off the harsh corners. Same thing to the other side. Right? 
and you can either have that beard go down into or the mustache go down into the beard or you can just put a little point to it Try not to be even because uh, beards are seldom even Carve around to that like so We're not defining this very deeply. This is a beard. It's hair. It's all up on other hair. It doesn't need to be real deep. Okay, now there's all kind of detail you can add. So here's a, some bonus stuff, right? If you want to, you can spend some time, take a V tool or something similar and just add some lines to this guy, right? And you can do this with a knife if you'd like to. And you don't have to do this at all. You can see the other one, we didn't do it, but if you want to decorate the bottom of the beard, you can do that. You can add a center thing that comes down with uh, some braids or just put a little more waviness, not waviness, more texture to the beard itself. I wanted to have one of each, so that's why this one we're texturing. Text to that mustache too similarly. Yeah, nothing crazy here, right? Just simple little lines to help put a little texture to the beard. And some of them can be deeper, right? You know, just do these thinner ones. Put a couple deep V's if you want to to break it up a little bit, you know. depth like so and uh i think we're gonna call him good now all i'm gonna do next though is i'm just gonna take him over to the sink and i'm gonna wash him and i'm gonna do it for two to three minutes under some water okay so here he is now take a look at this this is just water water and a brush and he looks significantly better than he did a moment ago I have two options for finishes here that I'm going to show you. On the left is paste natural finishing wax and dark walnut Danish oil. On the right is painting. Um, take a look at the painting video. You can see how I finished both of these guys out. Don't forget to like the video, folks. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and stopping by and visiting with me. Uh, don't forget to go to the Etsy store and grab a sticker. And check out one of these other videos that you're going to see popping up on the screen here. Watch more videos on the channel, folks. It really helps me out. I really appreciate your time, and I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you so much.